Patrick Fendaro here, co-founder at Vetted Biz. Today, we have two special guests, a franchisee, as well as the CEO of Patrice & Associates. We have Ken Lacey, who is a U.S. military veteran and franchisee of Patrice & Associates, as well as he's joined by Brian Miller, who is the CEO of Patrice & Associates. Thanks for you two for uh, joining today. Sure. Absolutely. We're excited about it. Thank you. So, Brian, could you tell me a little bit about what Patrice & Associates does and kind of the industry that you guys Love play in? To. Uh, we love talking about that. Uh, Patrice & Associates is one of the largest management and executive recruiting firms in North America. We have approximately 180 locations. And what we do every day is we find really talented people and we match them up with really good companies. We have done that traditionally in the hospitality and food and beverage vertical market. However, due to the demand for staffing in the tight labor market, our business has been expanding exponentially into other vertical markets outside of hospitality and food and beverage and really been um, driving uh, new lines of business within the executive search arena. We can talk a little bit more about why the demand is there for that during this podcast today. We're in 2024. What is the industry looking like? What do you foresee in, in the arena? Sure, I'd be happy to uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, we're in a very tight labor market. Uh, we know what the labor market was prior to the pandemic. It was a tight labor market then. We all know what happened during the pandemic. And post-pandemic, it's an even tighter labor market. One of the things, there are several things that are driving that. Uh, number one, people like me, I'm a baby boomer, although I'm a younger baby boomer. Uh, a lot of those people left the workforce during the pandemic and didn't return. That coupled with a declining fertility rate um, that has been declining for decades, uh, where we're just not, have we don't have as big as families as we used to, that has really caught up with us. And we have this very tight labor market which is likely going to continue to remain that way. Of course, there's always going to be peaks and valleys in the economy. Uh, that's the way the business cycle goes. But on a long-term basis, our labor market has tightened. And that's really where we come in. Um, that's why companies are looking to recruiting firms, good quality recruiting firms like Patrice & Associates, to help them find talented people because they really can't find those people on their own. And that's one of the reasons that our, the demand for our business is growing so much. Ken can elaborate on that with what he sees out there in the field every day. Yeah. What do you see as a franchisee? Well, I think, uh, you know, to Brian's point, I think uh, we're different in the sense of what we bring to the table. So we don't just uh, typically take a, not typically, we never take a resume and just slap our logo on it per se, right? So we actually spend time digging in. Uh, to an individual candidate's background and experience to capture those accomplishments and achievements. That's really what we're after. Resumes are very commonly written in the form of a job description or list of responsibilities. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something that's qualitative and, and quantitative. And that's a huge benefit to uh, an employee, especially looking long term, because when you look at, you know, the change in generations and that kind of thing, um, we're only looking to send to them what we classify as an A candidate. And the three primary factors of that is what we call the three T's, type, title, and tenure. So our clients know when they're getting a candidate, whether they move forward or not, they know that that candidate has passed our vetting process and meets their qualifications and requirements. Ken, I'd be curious to hear a little bit about your transition from um, the military life to um, owning and operating a, a small business. We've had a few veterans uh, on our show talk about their experience in franchising and across the board, it's been pretty positive and they've been able to be a very positive contributor to the franchise system they enter into. But I'd be curious to hear a little bit about your experience and what you leveraged from your background in, in serving and how Patrice and Associates uh, has benefited and helped you. Absolutely. You know, in the military, you, you have a mission and that mission entails an objective that you're looking to reach or, or overtake. Uh, there's always a plan, always a method in place to make that happen. Granted, that has changed with today's threats on the battlefield. We've had to adjust, but that's part of the, you know, what is sketched into the military DNA is the necessity to remain adaptable. Having said that, though, the basics, the principles remain the same. In other words, what is your avenue of approach? Um, military terminology, right? And what is your scheme of maneuver, right? Scheme of maneuver. So how that equates to the transition process and eventually landing with Patrice and Associates, what is going to be your avenue of approach from a business perspective? In other words, what is my objective in business? Is it to work for someone else? 
Um, is it to be in a leadership capacity or a non-leadership capacity? Um, I think we know that even commonly when you're in a leadership role, you're still answering to someone else, right? Is it going to be sales, whether that's vehicles, whether that's insurance or something else? Uh, is it going to be obtain a real estate uh, license or is it about being a business owner? Then it's a matter of your scheme of maneuver, right? Again, that military terminology, how that equates to Patrice and Associates. It's that scheme of maneuver to reach your business objective, right? If it's to become a business owner, then what type of business, right? If it's a franchise, what type of franchise? Is it a brick and mortar? Is it remote? Is it a hybrid? What does the business model look like? And ultimately, how does it get you to your objective, Obviously, with Patrice and Associates, it's a franchise, right? So you're a business owner. And then you have plan of execution, another military terminology, if you would. And for Patrice and Associates, that plan of execution is our system, right? The process, the P&A way, if you would, right? Patrice and Associates way. As for military skills, how that transitions over to Patrice and Associates, the three primary that immediately come to mind are discipline, leadership, and adaptability. In terms of the, the discipline aspect, um, that's just simply about following the system, right? When you follow the system, it simply works. Follow it and you'll be successful. If you don't, you won't. It isn't a difficult system. Um, it's actually rather simple. Uh, I won't say it's easy, right? Like the old saying goes, if it, would, if it was easy, ever, everyone would be doing it, right? However, there's nothing complex about it. So simply put, if you have the discipline to stick to the process, you'll make money, right? And then on the leadership aspect, I think that can be an asset in coaching candidates through the process. And especially when understanding that you're working with individuals at all levels. Now, as Brian mentioned earlier, it's all management levels. However, you could be working with a restaurant team leader or shift manager. You could be working with a, uh, a vice president, uh, a VP of operations a director of operations, a CEO, right? Um, and the coaching also applies to our clientele. They don't necessarily know that <laughs> and sometimes may not recognize it, right? But it's for their own benefit and sometimes it's just simply necessary. So not only are you guiding candidates from a leadership standpoint, but also being able to recognize and know how to get someone back on track if they tend to stray off in a direction that doesn't serve them well in the process. And again, that can apply to both candidates and clients. And then in terms of adaptability, it's about working with other people, right? In the military, regardless of how well your personalities mesh, you have to know in time of war that you have each other's back. So if you're on the battlefield, you cannot allow a difference in opinions to jeopardize a mission because you're talking about people's lives potentially at stake, right? So I think having that experience you realize that we're all different. And so instead of that getting in the way, it should be embraced as a strength. I used to tell staffs who worked for me in the past, diversity is our strength. That's what makes us better. So those differences should be viewed as a tremendous asset. And that adaptability in working with different personalities, it applies internal to Patrice and Associates with other franchisees, the various candidates that we work with, and our clientele. Could you think of some ways that the franchise or Brian team and or your fellow franchisees have your back? Sure. Um, I mean, the first thing that immediately comes to mind is I'm now on the other end of the process when it comes to going through the discovery phase of deciding, you know, am I going to be a business owner? OK, it's going to be a franchise. Well, what franchise is it going to be? So I say that simply because I do a lot of validation calls. And so what I often tell folks is working together is a strength of ours. And, and that's how we have each other's back. It really is. You know, not to say that we're a perfect business. There is no such thing, right? So any business has their things that they can work on and get better. But in terms of the way we work together as a team, that is truly a strong suit for us. Um, and I'm talking about whether it's answering questions between one another, providing information. Sometimes we tag up on different things regarding a candidate, regarding a client. And uh, so that's, that's huge. Um, I think that's a a great example, in my opinion, uh, of how we have each other's back. You know, we are a home-based business, a virtual business. It's a professional model. 
Uh, you know, we're typical people are attracted to us that, you know, like the idea of being in a service based business and they really like the idea of helping other people. You know, and we oftentimes talk to a lot of people, some from the military, some not, that um, have that, you know, mentality. Our company, and, and perhaps if we have time today, we can talk about it, is based on some solid core values. Those core values are respect, treating people with dignity and respect the way you would want to be treated. Excellence, um, looking to, to provide excellence in everything we do. Service, looking to provide world-class service to all of the stakeholders of our business, whether that be the candidates, the, the companies that use our services. And finally, T, which is the last one, which is where this really comes in, which is teamwork. And that is at the end of the day, how we collaborate with each other to deliver on those services to the end users of our, of our system, whether that be a candidate or a company. One of the things that I'm most proud of about our model is how everybody works together. It's a little unusual in a franchise to see that happen to the level that it happens in our, in our model. And what Ken is referring to is two people will come together and they will work together to deliver the services to a client where in other franchise organizations, they might be viewed as competitors, right? Even though they're the same brand and they wear the same shirt. We see that happening every day in our company. And I don't believe that's by accident. I believe it is because of the core values and the people who become franchisees at Patrice and Associates like Ken, they really buy in and they're in alignment with those core values. Now, we have all of the great things that some franchisors are going to tell you. We think we do it better. We have amazing training. We have a support model that provides a mentor that is a mentor that's doing the business every single day, not just somebody that's reading from a manual. So there's all the support infrastructure that's there. But I think the heart of that question is you really see an organization delivering on that when you see the peers that are really helping each other out, in addition to the people that are being compensated to support you know, a new franchisee that's being ramped up. And the business model, is it is it generally like solopreneurs where you it's just the franchisee himself working or does it scale up and then you have recruiters underneath? What's like the typical organizational structure? That's like? a great question. And, you know, it's one of the really unique things about our model. Some of the times people are attracted to our model because we do not require people to have employees. And some people, frankly, they don't want employees. Okay, you know, they don't want to have, you know, to deal with that. Um, since it's a virtual model or a home-based business model, we uh, the majority of our people are operating the business as, a, as an executive recruiter themselves. However, they have the ability, the option to bring recruiters to work with them also on a virtual basis. So oftentimes what we will see, Patrick, is we'll see family members that are involved in the business. It's either a spouse or partner, or maybe they're siblings, or maybe um, it's an adult kid that... Um, you know, the mom or dad wants to start to bring into business. And this is a great training ground for that. Or, you know, you've got people that maybe will start the business and they work with somebody in their past that, you know, is a stay at home dad or a stay at home mom and would love the opportunity to be able to do something like this. While the majority of our franchisees are solopreneurs, uh, we do have franchisees that have one or two or more virtual recruiters that are working with them. Oftentimes they're family members. Sometimes they're other people that are just within their circle of influence. Ken, could you talk a little bit about your structure and kind of like the thought process on scaling up or, or just focusing on, you know, running the business as a solopreneur? So um, tagging on to some of what Brian talked about. So when you first come into Patrice and Associates, you, you go through the training. And what I often tell folks in some of those validation calls I mentioned is, you know, hit the ground running, hit the ground running. Make sure you learn the system, learn the process, get it down, be comfortable and confident with it. And then you can look at those other avenues uh, for additional income streams. And I'm talking about the client development and the recruiting aspect. Uh, both of those can be advantageous, whether it's one of them or both of them. Now, like Brian said, we have some franchisees who will build a whole team of recruiters. Um, others have no desire to do that, right? They would work just prefer to just work strictly independently, right? So there are different ways that you can approach that. I've had recruiters um, in the past supporting my, my franchise. I don't currently. That's just a change in my own, uh, my own approach and my own style. But it can de definitely be beneficial. And we have some recruiters actually in Patrice and Associates that have been with us for quite some time and have really produced some significant revenue. So in terms of scaling, 
that's really your, your, your two primary ways outside of your own efforts is if you bring, if you choose to bring recruiters on as well as your client development. It seems like the franchise is adaptable to, to, as people progress with their personal career endeavors, they can either scale up or, or scale down. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that's attractive about our model. You know, there are some franchise models that are bricks and mortar and you have to hire staff. There's no, there's no two ways about it to be able to execute on that business model. And they're great models and, and they, they're attracted to certain people. Our model is a little bit different than that. You know, we are a service based business, you know, what we do every day is we service companies and help them find really great talent. As I said, we're a career coach to the individual. We're a talent acquisition consultant to the company. We have people that are in our system that are, you know, have been with us for years and very successful that don't have anybody working with them. And that's okay. And then we have other people that come in and say, hey, part of my business model is I do want to scale up. So we give you that ability to do that. And again, as I said before, sometimes it's family members that choose to join together. In this training class we have right now that we just completed, we have two sisters that have wanted to work together for a long time. And both of those sisters are going to be functioning in a recruiting capacity. So it's more than one person that's operating the business. I have another lady that has brought a recruiter on board. Um, another, Actually, there's two franchisees that have um, a sibling involved in the business. So again, sometimes those additional recruiters are family members that they wanted to bring into the business. Maybe one of them is the franchisee and they're bringing their sibling on to assist in various different ways. Ken, what side of the business do you find more challenging? Is it getting the employers, the client acquisition side, or is it on recruiting the employees? Yeah, I would say the, the recruiting part is probably more challenging in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because of the variances that you get when you bring on recruiters to support your franchise. You know, in terms of your clientele, your clientele, they know they're paying for a service, right? Um, so they're expecting you to produce. But the beauty of that process is a client does not pay until we deliver, right? So that's a bit more of a cut and dry versus when you bring on a recruiter, there, there can be a lot of variables there, right? And, and those variables can have a, a positive impact. There can be those that you know, may not be as beneficial, right? And to kind of be a little more specific, when you bring a recruiter on to support your, your franchise, they're not invested from the standpoint of buying a franchise, right? So they don't have that monetary investment, if you would, right? So it's a little different for them. Now, some of that is personality driven, right? It meaning, you know, what are their goals? What are their ambitions? How serious are they about putting in, you know, full-time work to support your, your franchise? Um, but once you have a recruiter that learns the process, they follow the system and you're comfortable and confident as a franchisee that they're doing that, for the most part, it's hands off. And that's where it really becomes uh, a real nice setup, if you would. Right. Because now, even though everything that they do still trickles through you as the franchisee, for the most part, you're hands off. And, and now you're talking monetary benefits to both the recruiter themselves, as well as you, the franchisee. How does it work? So you, I guess you, you get a percentage of their first year salary. How, how do the economics, how, I guess, how do you make money uh, kind of in your business? So when it comes to uh, recruiters, it's franchisee dependent, right? So in other words, each franchisee can set it up differently. I think there are often a lot of similarities between, you know, franchisees, how we approach bringing on recruiters. Um, but there can be some some differences too, right? You know, for example, I have historically uh, brought on recruiters, and I would offer them a a certain percentage of commission, right? Uh, right at the start, I would give them incentives along the way to where they can increase that percentage. And yes, the beauty of it, you as a franchisee, you're still getting a cut, right? Where they're hitting the ground, but those incentives, of course, you know, pays dividends to them, right? Because the more they produce, right, the more that they can get out of it. So it does vary from franchisee to franchisee how you structure that. But I think more times than not, the similarities uh, are certainly there in terms of starting at a specific commission amount, if you would. So let me just uh, jump in and, and uh, maybe offer some uh, perspective on that. The way our business works is we are we a company signs an agreement with us. And for that agreement, they agree to pay us a fee if we find them someone like Ken, Ken said, it's typically contingency-based recruiting. So let's say for example, you know, we sign an agreement with a company and they want us to play, they want to place uh, 
or we, they want us to find a manager that will be placed with them. So we would say, based upon the salary, we're going to charge you X percentage of the first year starting salary. That's the fee that we get. So when we find that person, the company pays us that fee. And then that fee, less royalties, is distributed to the franchisee. And if the franchisee has a recruiter, then they have a separate compensation because they're independently owned and operated. Uh, but depending upon the size of the company, the type of positions that are being hired and the volume, meaning the number of positions that the companies are looking for, the, the ranges that we would charge vary. Uh, just in general, in the staffing and the recruiting world, the higher that you go up in the food chain, meaning the higher level of position, the bigger fee you pay. You know, if you're if you're looking to find a senior vice president of global marketing with the company, it's going to be a higher fee than if you're looking to find an assistant manager at a fast food restaurant, simply because it's going to take you longer to recruit that kind of person. Yeah. And there's a longer interview cycle than a, a different level of position. But we do everything and our business is very diversified. So all of our clients have an agreement with us. They agree in advance to pay the fee. And these are the services that we provide. And the franchisee makes money by placing um, candidates with those companies. I imagine, Brian, from a cash flow perspective, it's helpful to have those placements where you have the assistant manager, the manager, and also placing like a CMO and some of those higher levels. But are there other ways that you help the franchisees in your in your network with dealing with the, those cash flow up and downs? Because I mean, imagine if someone was just on their own independent, it would be super daunting and they wouldn't have the resources to kind of manage that. That's also one of the things that is one of the biggest advantages of Patrice and Associates because there's there's other recruiting franchises that are out there and there's other independent recruiters. But one of the benefits of Patrice and Associates is that we have this unique way in which we're set up and we have a shared database. We as a franchisor um, have signed corporate accounts and we open those jobs up to franchisees to work and other franchisees like Ken have been successful in signing their own clients and open those uh, franchise, open those clients up to work. So as a new franchisee coming on board with PNA, even as opposed to a new uh, franchise, new franchisee coming on with another staffing company, the difference is is they have candidates and they have companies to work from day one. So all franchisees are taught to develop their own accounts. However, our business typically has a little bit different ramp up, a faster ramp up because they can hit the ground running because they're already clients to work. For example, we just finished a training class and all of those franchisees have jobs to work from day one. In any other recruiting franchise, they wouldn't. They would have to go find the customers. And then Cold once calling. they found the customers, then they would have to do the recruiting. We have over 700,000 people in our database and we have hundreds and hundreds of jobs. So the answer to your question is twofold. Number one, Franchisees can work other franchisees' jobs if their client is in a lull, and they can also build their own client uh, uh, portfolio. Uh, so if, you have a, if you're looking at your business from a diversified perspective, you want to be going and getting your own clients. You want to be working open jobs that are in the system, and you want to be working all different types of levels. That's how we as a franchise would help the franchisee out is that it's not all dependent upon them getting their own clients. There's a lot of other jobs that they can work, maybe if their client is in a lull or while they're in the process of developing their own client. So that helps a little bit with the peaks and valleys. Now, at the end of the day, everybody's an independent business owner and they still have to work. But um, the fact that there are candidates and clients and we have this unique shared database, almost like a realtor's MLS system, it's really truly an advantage that is different than even some of those other staffing franchise models that are out there. And it seems like a truly vetted database that you have that's really large where the online job market, like talking to friends that have gone through, you know, their own search applying on LinkedIn and these different job boards, it's like a lot of bait and switch where they apply for a job, the job doesn't exist anymore. And it's just, it's, I'd be curious to hear your, your feedback, but it seems like the options available directly to the consumer are really going down in quality and there's just so much noise there. Well, that's a great question. Um, anybody that we have as a client has signed an agreement with us and they have agreed to pay a fee and they have opened a job up for us and we have jobs that are open in the market. Now, the employment market is very dynamic. I will say that companies hire people and open jobs and close jobs. But we, if we're advertising for a position, 
uh, and, and not everybody advertises, but it's an option, um, then we have a job order that's a real job that's attached to that. Um, so it's not fiction. Um, to us, it would be you know, inappropriate to advertise for a position that we didn't really have. Um, so we have open jobs in our system and we have hundreds of those open jobs. The advantage of working with, you know, somebody like a Patrice and Associates recruiting uh, firm is that we can catapult their resume above the rest of the crowd. Even if that company is mm -hmm. advertising on their own and some of our clients still do, um, we have the decision maker um, that we will contact and their resume will be catapulted above all of those people that are applying to the website. So there's a lot of advantages for the for the public to work with a company like Patrice and Associates. The job boards, uh, you know, I'm not going to say anything really negative other than um, because the labor market is so tight, many companies are telling us they're using the job boards and they're not getting the quality of candidates or, you know, the type of people that are really qualified for those positions. So that's actually a driver for why a company would come to us and say, hey, we see all these great commercials on TV that all you have to do is advertise on one of the job boards and you're going to find somebody that, you know, is the needle in the haystack. <laughs> but the reality is it just isn't working that way. So it's actually one of the reasons that companies are coming to us. But it's, by the same token, it's also frustrating for candidates that are applying and then they never hear anything back. Um, when they yeah. work with the recruiter, we'll tell them, hey, you're, you're, you're <laughs> qualified for this position you get feedback. or not. But, um, it, you know, they're going to have somebody. It's the best game in town. Right, Ken? I mean, from the candidate's perspective, we work for them for free because the company is paying the bill. We're helping them redesign their resume. We're coaching them. We're providing career coaching. It doesn't cost the candidate anything. And how much like like what's the range like when you're making placements, Ken, like the candidate was an inbound and saw one of the, the abs or job boards and, and came and you filtered out. Versus you or someone on your team, the recruiter reaching out directly and being like laser focused. Okay, this is this guy has a profile. Let's poach him from this company, or he's in a sabbatical. Let's get this guy over to our client. Yeah. So if if I understood and heard what would you ask, uh, Patrick, we we operate from from three levers, and those three levers are database calls. That's that huge database that uh, Brian referenced uh, over you know seven hundred thousand uh, potential candidates, right? So that is one way. Uh, a second way is what we call recruiting calls, right? When when we reach out to, to businesses and speak to uh, the management for referrals and then the ads, right? Uh, Brian talking about those those job boards, right? So those are the three levers that we're pulling from. But I think it takes me back to something that Brian was talking about. And, and that is in today's world, it is very common that businesses, when it comes to uh, assessing potential candidates, right? When they have an open position and they're outsourcing or looking for somebody to fill a position in today's world, a lot of that is automated, right? Now, what I mean by that is sometimes it is a system based on algorithms that is deciding whether or not a business or a manager within that company is going to look at that candidate or schedule an interview. Well, that's the beauty of where we come in, as Brian was describing, is we're physically communicating with that individual directly, right? We're coaching them through the whole process. And as Brian said, the client is the one that pays us. So the, the candidate, they're not paying a dime, not one penny. So when you have someone who you're working directly with, right? It's not going through a system. Uh, it's not going through an automation process. You are communicating directly and they understand and appreciate what you are doing for them. They're committed to the process. They're communicative. They're responsive. And you're able to help that individual land a position. That's where it just becomes super fun. In my opinion, it's so rewarding, you can't even put a dollar figure on it, really. And, and that's just where it becomes enjoyable, right? Because it's a beautiful thing when you can help someone advance their career. If I can just comment on that for a second, I do want to clarify one thing that you uh, that you said, Patrick. We don't really poach people from companies. Yeah, we um, we actually call companies and do indirect recruiting. So that is a little bit of a nuance. Um, however, since we brought it up, you know, we should discuss it. And what that means is is that we're not trying to recruit the individual that we're calling. We're simply calling, doing networking calls. So we would call company and say, "Hey, who do you know that might be qualified for this great opportunity?" The person who answers the phone, we might not even be interested in because they're not they we don't know if they have the qualifications or not. So we do indirect recruiting 
And sometimes they might be qualified and be interested. Other times they might refer us to their friend, a neighbor, a brother, somebody that they've worked with in the past. The reason that that's appealing to a company is companies aren't going to do that. They don't know how to do that. They don't want to know do that. They don't feel comfortable doing that. They're not going to call their competitor uh, down the street and <laughs> and be perceived as poaching somebody. What we do as an independent yeah. third party recruiting company is we do these networking calls. And what we're really interested in is getting names of qualified people that we can take through, you know, our vetting process. The one thing that Ken said, I think is really important because it, this is at the heart of what we do every day. And I started out with saying this to you is that we provide coaching, career coaching these individuals and we're really changing their lives. You know, I have a, a stack of testimonials on my desk of people that we have helped place in jobs as recently as last week. Uh, we have this really cool process set up where when somebody gets placed uh, at headquarters, we send a note to that person and say, hey, tell us about your experience with Ken and tell us you, about your experience with Patrice and Associates. Patrick, these people write these paragraphs about how we change their lives. And, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's like you introduce them to their mate. It, it, uh, like a job is very important for hundred percent. I mean, what you think about it, if you've been in a bad career and you, or you have a bad boss or you're in a stressful situation, it affects your psyche. It affects um, sure. sometimes uh, has ripple effects on your family. But when you're able to help somebody get a position that um, has a better career path for them, be maybe better work hours, better benefits. And they write you a testimonial and said, man, you changed my life. You know, <laughs> that is meaningful, you know, and we get these oh, yeah, love, love hundreds it. of them. And I, I don't think it's by accident. It's because of the core values of our brand. It's because we have great people like Ken who really care about what they do. And they, they it, even though the company is paying the, the fee, they want to do right by the person because they want that person to stick, right? That's why we get these amazing testimonials from people that say, hey, I've never had this experience with a recruiting recruiting firm before. You know, Patrice and Associates, there's, some, there's something, something different about you guys. Um, and that's, I think, what we're most proud of. And, you know, when we put the Patrice and Associates shirt on or when we represent the brand, you know, out there, we at the end of the day, we're really focused on doing the right thing and delivering on quality. And that goes back to the core values of our, of our brand. I imagine for so many people, you've really helped them find their vocation, where in the past it was their job, but now it's what they love to do and what they're, what they're meant to be here to do. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention, uh, you know, in terms of uh, how we work with uh, those candidates, you know, again, e even though the client pays us, um, and, and that is certainly where, you know, uh, our, our immediate focus and a big part of our focus lies, we're still building a working relationship with that candidate. We're still building trust. The point I want to make with that is, and this goes back to some of what Brian was talking about, we actually have candidates that come back to us later in life. I've had it happen multiple times. Uh, they come back to us later in life um, for their next phase in their career. Um, we have candidates who send us referrals. We have candidates who lead us to a new client. Um, and in some cases, these are candidates that we may not have even placed, right? But because of that relationship that we built, that trust, right, it just leads us that much further in business. It, it kind of goes back to the best selling book of all times says, you know, you reap what you sow. Right. So when you're giving of, of yourself, you're giving with the right heart from the right place. Things are going to come back to you in some form at some point in time. Right. You may not know what that is, what that looks like or what scale it's on. Um, but again, you reap what you sow. And, and I think we do. I think we see uh, the dividends from how we operate with candidates, just as Brian was alluding to a moment ago. What's the best way for someone to reach out if they're interested in exploring further Patrice and Associates franchise? Uh, the best way for them to reach out would be to contact us. They can go through our regular website, which is patriceandassociates.com or Patrice Franchising also. And we'll make sure that we include those domain names for you so that you can include them on the podcast. Perfect. Well, Ken, Brian, really appreciate you two joining today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it.